haven't been really sitting down to ask him to speak to me and, and actually write something out for a little while. And last night, that's why I was downstairs. He didn't see me for a while. Just appeared doing this stuff. Uh, so I asked him, I said, Lord, give me a new beginning. And um, I said, uh, help me find a, a place in your kingdom. Um, open up a new plan for me. Ask him what I should do about the church. All of those typical questions. Uh, open up my heart to you in new ways, love and wisdom, and to give victory and glory to your name. And then I feel the response coming back was this. In time, things will come into place, into view. You will see the horizon approaching you, and you will know that the war will begin. And I believe this is prophetic for all of us, not just me. Okay. New visitors, no, excuse me, new business, new things, new ways, and victory over the enemy. Hide in the cleft of the rock until I am ready to use it to glorify my name. And then he says, glorify my name. My blood covers you. Enjoy your redemption and don't worry. My timing is perfect and you don't have to worry about when or why. I will guide you into the place and time of my use of you. Excuse me. Retire your fears and worries. Trust in my trust in me and trust in my love. It never ends. And comes at no cost to you. I have paid the price. It is finished. Let me guide you in love, not fear, and you do the same with my sheep. I will show you a new way that will transform how you minister and love. I give new hearts, soft, loving hearts, and so yours will also become one. Follow me, don't lead me, and I will show you, don't lead me, and I will show you new things. Trust me with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Trust me and not the ways of the, of the world wicked. No one loves you like I do. I am your father forever. Don't worry. All things are in my hands. I don't drop people or things that are mine. I honor and love and treasure them. I created you for a purpose, and I will fulfill that purpose through you. I think this says, engage me in love, intimacy, and trust. This is your call. Love me forever as I have loved you. No turning back forever. Love that. And I, I was seeing faces of people here as I read this back this morning to myself. So I know this is not just, uh, not just for me. And then, this follows Friday night. <laughs> and then on uh, this afternoon, I felt the Lord telling me to stop by this relatively large Hispanic Pentecostal church on Braddock. And I've been wanting to go there for some time. And then today, after we, we came back from uh, the breakfast, I, um, I felt the Lord telling me, you got to stop and see this pastor. And Jennifer said, no, 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 I want to go home. <laughs> I said, no, I got this. So I did a U-turn. And we drove back. We went down to the church. And uh, he was in his office. Ten minutes. He had ten minutes between services. And they let us. He didn't eat lunch because we came in. And, um, and I, I looked at his bio on the website, and he had been in the Air Force and all of these other things. He started off with nobody, just a little home group and four people. And I thought, I, I felt God called me in there. And uh, as we went into his office and we're talking, and, um, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit fell on him. And uh, he said, oh, oh, I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. He's been a pastor for 38 years. They have uh, about five or 600 people in their congregation. And um, he said, oh, let me pray for you. So he puts his hands on, we this after a long conversation. And I said, whoa, uh oh There's nobody behind me. There's a floor like this. And a chair over here. And I quit. I grabbed his arm and Jennifer was in the bed. I hit the floor. And then you fell against the door. And uh, afterwards, he said, I saw angels around your ministry. He said, I'm going to support your ministry. And um, he couldn't, he doesn't have a place for us to meet in this church yet. But they're going to build a $5 million dollar annex uh, within the next couple years he's praying. So I said, well, pastor, I, I, and as I was on the ground, I felt the Lord telling me spiritual father and trust. And he said the same thing to you, right? Trust. Yes. And he was like, he said, well, the Lord's on this ministry. I'm going to help you. 
I don't know what that mouth why I feel all like ghosts all over my body. And um, man, we gave big hugs. I just felt love. My whole heart was filled. I just felt God just blessing it. So uh, I don't know where we're going with this, but I said, Pastor, if I'm never out here, will you come and preach at my little tiny church? He said, Yeah, of course. We'll, we'll support the ministry. We'll put somebody over. So glory to God. Please pray about that. That's Pastor Lozano. He's also, he believes he's part uh, Jewish uh, because of the Holocaust. Uh, oh, your story, exactly. I knew he was talking about, because he contacted the Catholic Church and he said, my name is Lozano. Are there any records? He said, oh yeah, that was a Jewish name. So, uh, interesting. Oh, glory to God. Thank you. Somebody needs to, Jeff, can you pray for me? I don't need to hit the floor again today. 